Hello everyone, this is Andrew AJT62 as always, and welcome to my tier list video for Super Smash Bros. Melee version 1.02. Um, this won't be covering the PAL version or 1.0, but um, I might reference those at some point. So the first thing you'll notice is I'm actually not showing the tier list yet, because I do want to say that, um, you know, I'm sure to some people this tier list will be mildly controversial. I really actually don't think this tier list is very controversial. Um, it's pretty in line with many tier lists other than for a few minor things but if you disagree with anything in this tier list and chances are you will because there are 26 characters um, tons of different possible tier list combinations I'm sure some of you guys will have some disagreements so please feel free to comment with some constructive criticism and who knows I'll keep an open mind maybe I'll even change my mind but um, feel free to disagree with any of this you don't you know it doesn't have to be in a malicious manner like what the fuck I think Pikachu should be higher asshole no, you could just say, look, listen, I think Pikachu's a little better, you know, because of this, this, and this. Obviously, you know, that should go without saying that constructive criticism is the the most um, constructive type of thing for this type of uh, video. But um, sometimes it doesn't go without saying, so I figured I'd say it. But without further ado, let's show you the tier list. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is that I'm actually showing the entire list in one go. Um, I've seen other videos where other people kind of just kind of, like, reveal the characters one by one maybe starting from the bottom or starting from the top and so you get a little more suspense and maybe that would make for a little bit more interesting of a video but I feel like this is better just because it kinda gives you a, a, a plenty of time to gradually see the entire list for yourself and make any interpretations or see where you might disagree or uh, might be surprised by different things and um, this list was made using some internet app which I will link in the description, so shout outs to this website. Um, some sort of, the URL is kind of weird, so I'm not gonna, I don't know what to credit, but I'll link in the description, do give full credit there, and uh, you guys can make your own tier list. So, another thing you'll notice is that I actually put, I, I'm not sure if I put this on Twitter, but I did make this list actually quite a while ago. I think the discussion, the reason I made it is because there was a discussion going on in the smashladder.com melee chat about tier lists, and people had all these funky tier lists, so I figured. Um, let's try making one of my own, and I did actually change this a few times because uh, I had different thoughts about the characters. So before I, this this video will probably be in multiple parts, just because if I'm going to talk so much about all these characters, there's no way I'm going to talk through 26 characters in in one video. I mean, I could make this video over time and then upload it into like one multiple hour video if that if that would if that's what it comes down to. But I don't think I'll do that. So anyway, another thing that's worth mentioning is my background on Melee. Um, some of you guys on the East Coast, or just if you watch my videos, might know me, and um, some of you guys on the Midwest or um, West Coast might not. I've been playing, well, my history with Smash Bros is essentially in my, I guess, credibility. I mean, I'm sure there, there's a lot even smarter minds in the Melee community, but my personal credibility is I started playing Smash Bros when I was like five years old. I got a Nintendo 64 for Christmas. That was um, even before Melee had came out, and I did get Melee on launch, and from 2001 to 2008, I was pretty much a just casual player. I'd play with my friends. Um, you can even find a uh, a video on my channel from 2008 of me fighting a level 9 Ganon, and with Fox just using neutral B laser just on the ground over and over, and it's pretty embarrassing. I'll link in the description if you want to watch that, but... Um, in 2009, I started um, watching competitive Melee videos. I saw the videos from the Revival Melee tournament. I was very inspired by those um, MLG videos with, you know, Ken, Isaiah, Mewtwo King, um, even King, you know, the Puff player. There's a lot of great names from back then I would watch. So, um, like 2007, 2008, I made my Smashboards account and I started learning competitive. And um, I've been going to tournaments for many years and playing competitively as well. Um, and also other things, I guess to go over a few of my accomplishments, and I don't want this to seem like a, a bragging portion of the video, even though it's, it might come off like that, but just to give you guys a little bit of credibility as to, you know, how I formed these opinions. Um, some of my accomplishments is I've won a 95-man melee tournament in upstate New York. That was about a year ago. Um, the best player I've beaten would be Duck, um, the Samus player, and um, not to say that I'm a better player than him, because I'm not. He would, he would probably beat me with a little difficulty now, um, especially because he's gotten quite a bit better um, over the years as well, but that was in Apex 2014 where I had that win. Um, I was rank 1 on SmashLadder.com for Melee Netplay. Um, 
in the first season, and I've also been playing Melee Netplay since 2013, um, which has uh, definitely improved my skill, although I have been playing in tournaments for longer than that. Um, what else is there really to say? I mean, I've taken games off players like Mewtwo King in tournament, but that's not really... Taking games is kind of not that significant. I mean, anything can happen in one game of Melee, and you could lose a game. It's not that significant. Um, in terms of the characters I've been playing, I was... When I was playing casually, I was a fox man until 2008 or so, and then I started learning Marth. And um, I picked up Ice Climbers as well, and then I was kind of a Marth Ice Climbers main. And then around 2013, I noticed my Ice Climbers were just doing better in tournament almost every single time. And that was even before I started wobbling. Um, I started wobbling in like a little, maybe a little, six months after 2013. I'm not exactly sure. I could probably actually figure that out um, if I thought about it for a while. But um, So I dropped Marth and I was maining Ice Climbers kind of exclusively and then um, around two, maybe a year or two ago I picked up Sheik as well. Um, and now I've actually had a lot more focus on Sheik in the last year or two. I just find her the most fun character and char character that I would say I'm definitely best with now um, in most situations. Like, you know, in maybe some tougher situations like Falco on FD, my Ice Climbers might, might do better than my Sheik, but... Um, Generally speaking, my Sheik is my best character now. Um, I haven't been playing Melee a whole lot in the last year, um, specifically since May, due to hand pains, and those are actually improving. I mean, I say they're improving all the time, but it's a very gradual process, and, you know, different things come up, like different parts of my arm will start hurting, and different parts will get better. But gradually, it's I'm coming out of it slowly. There's a lot of physical therapy I've done, and it's helped a lot, um, and stretches and all the sort, and, you know... Um, I can make another video talking more about that, but um, I'm hoping to get back into Melee um, optimistically this summer, although this summer is coming up pretty quickly. Um, if not, hopefully slightly after that. I was also ranked 15th in New York and New Jersey back in, I think it was 2014, although um, because of my inactivity, obviously I'm not ranked now. And I wouldn't consider myself top 100, but um, you know maybe I'd be on, probably be on the PR for upstate New York where I'd go to college or potentially um, Long Island where I'm from, but um, yeah, we'll see how that goes when I can come back. So anyway, that's a little bit of background on me, or maybe a little, maybe a lot, depending on how long this video is. But, um, so let's tar start talking about the list itself. So I do have these characters organized into groups, like the S group, A group, or tier, um, is a better way to phrase it, the S tier. So what uh, do these tiers mean? Well, the characters are still listed, so I do think Marth is 4th and Jigglypuff is 5th, but being in a tier above another character on my list does actually mean something. So the easiest example is the S tier. The S tier I think is made up of 4 characters who are extremely good, who can dominate the game, and while some of them do have bad matchups, they're not significantly bad. Their worst matchups are probably no worse than 55-45, and they can definitely overcome those and win tournaments and you know not have a significant problem against any character. But the A tier, for example, you do have characters that have bad matchups. For example, I think Jigglypuff loses pretty solidly to Fox, and I do think that um, Peach is a significant problem for Pikachu, just as an example. Um, and obviously, when you go down the list, it becomes more prevalent, like Zelda versus Sheik, for example, is just absolutely horrible of a matchup, and the characters in the A tier have matchups that are bad but they're not quite that horrible just so just to give you an idea of what the the tiers mean but it is a list essentially but so the s here we'll start it off by saying yes again so these characters do not have significant matchup problems they might have bad matchups that are no worse than 55 to 45 however so we'll start off by talking about the obviously best character i think in the game and most people i think will agree with me on this when we get to number two i think we're going to have some immediate disagreements with, with a lot of people, but I do think most people will agree that Fox is the best character in the game. And there's not even, even that much you can say about Fox, but in especially in the NTSC version, he just has so many advantages of uh, over almost every other character. So Fox is the best character in the game, and I think most people will agree with me for a variety of reasons. So the... I think maybe the biggest reason, and other characters have this attribute as well, but is his speed. He is so fast in so many ways. His run speed is very, very fast. The only character who has a better run speed is Captain Falcon. 
His jumps are extremely quick. He has a three frame jump squat, which means that he is, can be in the air on the fourth frame of jumping. His jumps rise very quickly, so for example his double jump, if you look at a character like Peach, when she double jumps, even though it starts just as quick as Fox's, I believe that's frame one, um, Peach's double jump rises very slowly, whereas Fox's is very quick and he could reach the top platform with it extremely quickly. His wave dash is fast because his jump is fast, and he also is fast to recover because he has side B, the illusion, which is an extremely quick recovery move. So in those situations, those quote Dragon Ball Z moments where people, two people get hit, he can actually make it back to the stage very quick. Now his side B is actually not as fast as Falco's, but it's still a very quick recovery move and it's faster than, it's a faster option than most characters have in the game to recover. He can camp characters extremely well. He can mix up aggressive and defensive play. He has so many options regarding that. So you can camp people with lasers and force them to come to you, or you can be very aggressive, and we've seen players utilize those options or different play styles of foxes very very well. Like Mewtwo King, for example, has a more conservative style fox where he'll wait for them to come to them, and he'll can be quite somewhat defensive. Well, not to say he's never aggressive, but um, whereas a player like Mango can be all up in your face and be very successful at it. So his shine is another huge reason why he's so good. It's a one frame move that has invincibility and has so many purposes. For example, you can shine at a shield, and it's not the fastest at a shield option in the game, but it's definitely one of the best. If you're frame perfect with it, it comes out on the fourth frame because you have to have three frames of jump squat because you have to jump out of the shield and then you shine, which is one more frame, so it's frame four. Um, it's not always frame four um, in human levels of play, but I've seen players do it definitely very quick. For example, Ice is a g great example of a player who util utilizes Shine at a Shield very effectively, and this is a very effective um, thing versus Falco, Shine at a Shield. It's, it's so fast and it's so good. And Fox's Shine also has more range than Falco's. It ex the actual hitbox of the Shine extends much farther than Falco's, which can make a big difference. Um, of course, you can wave Shine people for um, guaranteed combos. I mean, they can DI it, but DI on the shine only helps so much. So you could do, you you have a one frame move that can lead into up smash, which is extremely powerful as a KO move. So powerful that the game's developers nerfed it in the PAL version. And this is starting to sound like a rant versus Fox, but I do actually like watching Fox play, and I do like playing as Fox. But um, yeah, so you have a one frame move that combos into one of the most powerful kill moves in the entire game. Um, up smash, or at least one of the most practical powerful kill moves, and it's a vertical KO move, so um, it doesn't really matter what part of the stage you're on, because you're always just going to go straight up. He also has a, a pretty good grab, ra grab range, and the grab is a normal speed, it's frame 7, so you can up throw into up air, and up air does have... you can... I'm talking pretty fast here, but there's so much to say about Fox, actually, um, I was wrong about that. You can up throw up air, which is a guaranteed combo on many characters. Um, many characters can also get out of it for a variety of reasons. For example, um, just to, like Bowser, for example, is a great example. Bowser is so heavy, and that actually affects the throw animation time. To throw long, to, generally speaking, for throws, they take longer the heavier the character is. So a character like Bowser, for example, it, the throw takes so long on him that Fox actually can't follow up the up throw. But a character like Jigglypuff, who's so light and you can throw right away, um, you can do up throw up air, which is a very good kill that could kill it very great great percents. It's a very powerful aerial. You can smash GI it, but um, the more good people are getting at smash GIing up air to some extent, the more people are the more skilled Fox players are going to get at using the second hit only of up air, which is almost always a possibility. Because if you don't know, up air has two hits. There is a weak hit, and then which almost does nothing, and then the strong hit of up air, which is the kill move, or also a very good combo move. And the idea of smash giing the up air is that you smash gi the first hit of the up air so that you avoid the second hit. But if the fox player is very good, they can kind of know this and they'll space it so that they're only going to hit with the second hit because the first hit will have already happened. Now, to be fair, I actually do think that. Players and it's pretty obvious that players are getting f better at smash jang the up air much faster than Fox players are getting at just hitting with the second hit only. But I do think that's going to become a thing as um, time goes on. So what else is there re to really say about Fox? Um, his recovery is is a it's a double-edged sword because his recovery moves 
go extremely far, and that's another thing in PAL that's nerfed about Fox. His side B and up B don't go quite as far. He has a pretty good air dodge, and um, as I was saying, his up B goes insanely high, um, pretty much like Mr. Game & Watch's up B, but it also is more versatile because you can go in any direction, and his side B is, of course, extremely good and goes just as, around just as far. Um, he has a wall jump, which not all characters have. Only eight characters have that, actually. And that gives him its ability and allows you to do things like the Duraki jump, as another example, off the ledge. Um, really, you could say almost anything. I mean, you could talk about almost any of Fox's moves. His up tilt is very fast. It's very hard to punish. It combos. It can kill. Um, you could wave dash back into up tilt, which is a very good option. His nair is very versatile. It can combo if they DI into it. And... It's a good move. It's a fairly good move in neutral. There are things you can do around it, such as wave dash back and grab. But yeah, overall, really Fox's main flaws is that he it can be comboed very easily because he is a fast faller. So, um, for example, when Marth up throws him, he doesn't go very high. So Marth can do combos such as up throw to up air or up tilt, and do quite a lot of combos on on Fox. He's also quite gimpable because if you get a read on his up B or um, his side B or you just go and actually hit him before he gets to do one of those moves, you can actually kill him at extremely low percents um, if you do your edge guarding correctly. So that is a flaw Fox has. He's also very light. He's actually close to, I think he's like fifth or sixth lightest character in the game, um, which means that he'll die off the side very early from things like Sheik Forward Air or Peach Nair or things like that. Um, but he, because he's a fast faller, he doesn't die very quickly off the top, so he can live things like another Fox's up smash um, quite long off the top, quite to quite high percents off the top, so that is a... it kind of counteracts the fact that he's so light um, and he could die quickly off the side, is that he can survive very long off the top. So, I mean, Fox does have his flaws, but I do think he is overall the best character in Super Smash Bros. Melee, and I can't ever see that changing... I mean, the metagame for all the other characters is advancing, but it's also advancing for Fox, and I do think there is... Even though I do consider Fox to be in the same tier as these other four characters, I don't think these other... Any, or, well, these other three characters, I don't think that they can overcome him at any point in the metagame um, in the future. Before I finish up with Fox, and I'll probably only talk about Fox in this video, because I actually did have a lot to say about him, which I wasn't expecting... I'll go over his matchups. I might have already mentioned this, but I do think he beats Falco 55 to 45. I think Sheik he would beat as well 55 to 45 at least, maybe a little bit more. Um, although I did say in this tier, I think no character loses more than 55 to 45. So I do think he, it's actually um, not worse than 55 45 for Sheik, and I'll explain that when I talk about Sheik. I do think he does beat Marth on just about every stage. On FD, it's pretty close to even, although it's harder to, for Marth to execute on FD than you think it would than than it has has been before because what foxes do now is they do slight DI and that forces Marth to do a, to do a pivot grab for the chain grab and we've seen players like even Mewtwo King who's known to be extremely good on FD and he is um, mess this up and get shined out of the chain grab or um, just many Marths in general even some Marths like the Moon or PPU aren't known to be the greatest on FD. I mean, not, I'm just, I'm saying that, meaning that their best stage is clearly not FD. They do better on stages like Battlefield or Pokemon Stadium where um, there's platforms and they could use those more effectively. So the current Marth metagame, other than Mewtwo King, a lot of Marths are actually not focusing so much on FD as they would be just on platform stages. So Jigglypuff, I do think he wins at least 60 to 40, maybe worse. I mean, people say 70, 30, but that, that's a little ridiculous. I mean, Jigglypuff can do so much in that matchup as well, even though I do think she loses it. Peach is probably around 60, 40 for Fox. Um, maybe if you get if you play Peach and there's a Fox camping you and he's very good at it, it's extremely hard to deal with. Armada is pretty good at dealing with it, but even he um, has kind of fallen victim to the strategy by Leffen, who really has advanced the strategy of a laser camping fox and it can be really tough um, to deal with that as Peach so I do think he does beat Peach pretty solidly. Ice Climbers is 
in practice, sometimes Ice Climbers can totally destroy Fox, but if Fox plays correctly, it's a very, very hard match for Ice Climbers, and I would say it's probably around 60-40. Falcon, um, Falcon's probably around 60-40 as well. I mean, a lot of these are just going to go in the 60-40 direction. Falcon can definitely... Falcons are getting better at tech chasing and combos and all sorts of things like that, and they're definitely making um, strives to do better versus Fox, but so far I do see that as a hard matchup for Falcon. Maybe it's not quite as bad as 60-40, because Falcon has speed, which is a very important thing, so maybe he does slightly better than that. I'm not fully um, decided on that either. Pikachu can certainly do well versus Fox, but in general I do think Fox wins that matchup at least 55-45. Um, and then the rest of the cast, it really comes down to the fact that Fox can camp these characters, and these characters, um, such as Dr. Mario or Link, they can't really approach Fox safely, and they're forced to take risks. And you could even see that in other matchups that of characters that are better, such as Ice Climbers or Sheik, can f be forced to take risks versus Fox that they wouldn't have to versus other characters, because Fox has speed and he has lasers and he has things like that. So that about wraps up my thoughts for Fox on this first part of this video, and I covered introductions as well. So I hope you guys hope you, hope you guys enjoyed, and let me know if you have any feedback um, about this whole list in general, although I'll be talking more about the other characters in other videos, so if you want to save your comments for those. But you can also comment on this video, I actually don't, don't really care. But um, if you have any thoughts on Fox, although, like I said, I don't think this will be very controversial, but Fox on first place in the tier list. So let me know if you have any thoughts at all on this tier list, and I'll happily, happily read your comments. And if you like this video, please subscribe for more, and like if you haven't already. I'll probably be putting these in a playlist when I start uploading these, so if there's a playlist, I'll link that in the description so you can watch um, the more of these when they come out. I don't think I'll make... I'll probably make these slowly and not just make them all in one day, because I've already been talking for like 30 minutes, including... Um, reshoots I guess or re retakes so I'll probably make these videos as I go along so I'll try to make a little playlist anyway yeah if you like this you can follow me on Twitter and Twitch and yeah I will see you guys around and hopefully in part two where I talk about this guy Falco and maybe I'll talk about more characters as well I'm not sure maybe I'll talk about Sheik and Marth in those videos but because I, I don't think I don't think I'll have as much to say about Falco anyway guys thank you for watching see you later in the next video hopefully part two will come out in a little bit or a few days, we'll see.